Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C here. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. Today I'm going to be doing a little work on the fire chicken, but it's not going to be about the body this time. It's going to be about the electronics. Yeah, I'll show you a few things on here that uh, remind me of somebody else's soldering. Get it? Look at this. Look at that. What a freaking mess. Even the two switches didn't need to have that much solder on them to make a connection. That is, that's pretty bad. I don't know if a shop did this or if it was done by an individual. Uh, the guy who bought the guitar, uh, I don't think he did this. I don't, I don't think he had anyone do this for him either because you just got it I guess but this will stay this will stay and these two switches will stay the wiring the soldering the pots will be replaced also I don't think that these switches are original to the guitar because I could tell just by looking at the switch that's behind the opening that's that's magic marker. That's black magic marker right there. And nine times out of ten, all the ones that I've seen that have a some type of a switch like this, a slide switch, on a pick guard, usually the opening isn't this big. Usually it fits just the switch that slides back and forth and that's it. So there's nothing really I could do about that. I am going to polish up this uh, pick cover a little bit to get it look as good as the body is looking but right now this is my main concern here is to fix all this these pots have and you can hear that they wiggle back and forth they feel very very loose uh, you can kind of like pull on them a little bit and move them side to side so I don't know how well they worked or even if they did work very good. I know that the owner said that when he picked up the guitar and played it, he loved the way it sounded, but I don't know how much he uh, fiddled with the controls, if there was any scratchy spots on it or not. To me, that would probably, probably would have something. So this is a CTS pod. I could tell just by looking at it. This one here, I'm not too sure. This one is a 500K pot. Um... I don't know if it's audio or linear. I'll have to check that out when I do pull out, pull these out and see what they are. But they're getting replaced with both CTS pots. And I'm going to clean up a lot of this wiring here. Even though it doesn't look too bad, um, you know, it could be a lot better. I mean, just a lot better than what it is. So it looks like here they cut all of the posts, the terminals that are on the switch all exception of the two that are being used so these switches are for um, taking the pickups and splitting them so I've got a shitload of CTS pots here I end up picking up a bunch of them actually I picked up a lot more of them yeah. so these are going to be short shaft they're not going to be long shaft and I don't think I'm going to go with the mini ones inside of here because I'm going to replace it with the same ones that came out. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so I picked up a bunch of battery boxes, a whole shitload of those. I also picked up a bunch of, where are they? Uh, battery clips. Because I know I'm going to be doing a lot more uh, active stuff. And also some stereo well, you can call them switched or you can call them stereo output jacks. Because that's basically what they are, are stereo output jacks. To make the connection between the grounds. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up. Oh, well, it's already fired up. I've got my little trusty uh, soldering station, which I love it. I, I really, really love it. Uh, i got the little, they call the, I call it the sucky toy for removing solder. 
And I've got some tools out over here laid out. I've got my wire over here. Uh, I'm going to get into this thing right now. So I'm going to get you overhead. And you can kind of watch what I'm doing here. If you like. If not, oh well. All right, so I really don't like this setup. I, I, I don't care for how it looks. Um, some people may not care as long as that it works. But to me, that's just a sloppy job. I mean, if somebody would end up taking this off after I sent it back to them and the guy had sent it to a shop to either have, you know, new pots put in or new switch or whatever, and the guy looked at this and said, you know, who the fuck did this? And the guy who owns the guitar said, well, you know, I think maybe the guy, last guy who worked on it, you know, no, that's not me. That is not me at all. And maybe somebody else, but that's not me. So let's get over here and start popping stuff off of the switch, the knobs over here. Now, I also noticed too with the body, which is, is kind of, um, when people do shielding tape, like they did on the back of this, which is fine, it's not a big deal. I mean, you use copper, you, I've got a shitload of the silver tape plus the paint. I use that a lot. But if you don't make the connections between the pickup cavities and the control cavity and then the ground on the control cavity, which a lot of people put a wire, uh, you know, tacking that ground. You really don't have to because the way these pots are set up and even to switch, the chassis of them are grounded. So if you're using like on this one here, I can't tell. Yeah, it looks like they got a lock washer between here. Um, that will actually make your ground for you. And you don't have to worry about the control cavity that much. But if you don't connect the pickup cavities, it's the shielding is really serving no purpose. And that's what I have to do with the ESP LTD Phoenix guitar is connect those cavities all together so it makes a connection, it makes a circuit. And uh, yeah, that's kind of something that uh, was overlooked when whoever did the shielding. So these are a flat screwdriver. Let's see how this is going to be because I can't pop that off very easily. There you go. All right. Made in Japan. Well, there's a sticker on it. It says made in Japan. So I don't know if that was aftermarket. They kind of look like they're aftermarket. They feel like they're aftermarket. Another thing, too, is when I put these on, and I don't think the last person did it either, so I'm going to slide this out very, very slowly so I don't change the angle of the post when it comes out. Come on. Oh, they did. Nice job there. All right, what I'm talking about here is you see that set screw that is right there, all right? And when you tighten up that set screw, you want to get that set screw to tighten up either between the shaft over here where it's split because if you do it when it's on the side over here, all you're doing is bending that in and it's going to come off. The knob will come off. Or what I've done before is got a sliver of wood and stuck it inside there. That way it doesn't matter which way you put the knob on. Either way, it's not going to slide off. It'll be nice and tight. So let's get started over here. I want to remove... I'm going to remove that cap first. Clean my tip of my solder soldering station, tune it up a little bit, and go ahead and hit this on here, see how fast this will end up breaking loose, add a little bit more solder on that, so it kind of melts the other shit that's on there, there we go, now it's starting to do something, come on, come on loose, the other wire is all loose, but what about this one? Come on. Oh, it's long. That's why. There we go. All right. Let's untack it from here. All right. So that's loose. And that white wire is loose. All right. So now I can go ahead. this here, this one knob. Uh, let's see here. There you go. I know the CTS has got a bigger... 
And if some of you guys are saying, wow, he's touching that knob or that pot, and that pot has got to be hot. Yes, it is. Yep, add a lock washer on there. So that works out perfect because that will help dig into the tape and make a good ground. So let's go ahead and get some new CTS pots. So as so I'm showing you here, it does say CTS. It is a 500K. But the one thing that I like to do with these before I end up installing them let me just feel how this feels. Oh, that's nice. That's nice and smooth. Not wiggly, not loose. Uh, I need a file. Some people don't believe in doing what I'm doing right now. Uh, I believe in it because what that does is it helps with your grounding and for the solder to have something to bite into as far as the metal goes, because there is some type of an oil coating on these. Some of them even have a, um, uh, I want to say like a plating on them. But once you kind of scratch up the surface and wear it out a little bit, uh, you'll see a, when you put your solder, you'll see a pull around it, and that pull will be like a darker color. That's the resin. And it's making a good connection. So I really don't want to like mess up this CTS logo, but I'm gonna to have to because that's where the that's where that cap is going. So just scratch up the surface. Also, what I do is I like to scratch up the surface on the terminals as well. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. It depends on what they look like. If they look like they're they're like these are hazed over quite a bit, they don't look like they're a shiny, I probably wouldn't uh, I probably wouldn't have to file the terminals a little bit to put some scratches inside of it. But a lot of times you see some of them they have a um, like this one here, okay. This has got a little bit of a shine to it, and I'm not looking at these two because of the uh, solder it's on. I'm looking at the coating that is on it here. This has got a little bit of a shine. I don't know if you can tell tell the difference between the two of them. But there's a little bit of a difference on this one compared to what this one is. This one here I probably would have done the uh, the filing on the terminals. This one here I don't think I really have to but I'm going to anyways just to make it that much better all right so the, with this comes a new bag of parts and stuff now I will send back I know he probably wouldn't want them but I'm going to send him the old pots that way he can like look at one and look at the other and kind of feel the difference between the two of them. Alright, alright, I need another washer. Come on, another silver washer, there you go. I have to reorganize my shit like you wouldn't believe. I have got so many parts all over the place that I need to put that over there because I'll be replacing the volume. So many parts all over the place that I need to kind of correct and organize and fix and yeah, just unreal what's going on over here as far as that shit goes. All right, so these are the same size, same nut, same everything. Go ahead and screw this in place. Now I'm not going to tighten this up. I just want to get it in place and get my wires going because, like I said, I want to polish up this panel. So I'm going to get everything laid out here, unscrew all the screws and nuts and take them off, and it'll all come off in one strip, and then polish this up to get it looking really nice. Alright, so the first thing I want to do 
Let's kind of like clean up the solder that's on this cap without heating it up too much. All right, that's good. Now what I want to do is put a puddle over here. Let it heat into the metal. I'm going to put a little bit of solder on the terminal here. Go ahead and put my cap on here. And then bend this over. Heat up this solder here, this puddle that I just put down. Bend that in there. Add a little bit more. There will be another connection there as well. There we go. Melt that into there. And you turn the heat up a little bit on this. Well, that's a hell of a lot better than what it was, that's for sure. I'm going to move this over. Yes, it is hot. <coughs> now I'm replacing all the wire with the same wire that I normally use all the time, and that is this. It's got the braided on it. I saved a little cutoff pieces because you never know when you're just going to need it, just a tiny piece. Now this is going to be one long piece of wire just like this, okay? I'm going to split it in certain areas. So I'm going to tin this up a little bit. Hit it with the ground. This is going to go around this way because it needs to go over to the three-way switch. I need to clean up that mess. Get my ground wire off of here, or their ground wire. Now nothing's going to change with the wiring. The wiring is going to stay exactly the same. I'm not going to uh, modify anything as far as that goes, but just replace replace what is here. Right. Turn the heat up a little bit on this. There we go. Now it's melting it. Come on. There you go. And I want to clean the terminal here. If I can get this in there. Here, I get solder inside here already. Yep. said this is going to be one big ground. So what I need to do is I need to split this here. Just 
just like that. And take this and bend it. This will go inside of the hole. Once I move the sleeve down a little bit. Clutch sleeve is nice, but man, it becomes a pain in my ass sometimes. Alright, so that's tight. Put this inside of here. off of my soldering gun or iron whatever you want to call it heat this up slide that into the hole So it's not dry or anything. Dry solder. I need to get something to hold this in place. There we go. Suck that shit in there. All right. So that's that. Now we have to make our rounds to the top of this one here. means I need to disconnect that. This one I'm not saving anything on it, so clip away. These two hold on to those. See, this doesn't look too bad. I really don't have to file these, but I'm going to anyways. All right, so this one here is your grounded. So I bend that over. And I also give it a little bit of a tweak at the end to make it come that much closer to it. And then my lock washer in place, this washer in here, this washer in here, just snug it up, and I'm ready to start doing my other ground. Alright, so this ground here is going to go like this, so I need to split this wire right here.
So the reason why I do this is because of the car audio stuff that I used to do. And the thing is, is that the more splits or the more cuts you have in a wire, like when you have, you know, two pieces of wire and they're, they're soldered together like this, um, causes resistance. Even though with this, that resistance really maybe might be minor because there's really no power going through this, um, but it's still resistant. So if you leave the wire connected and long like this, especially if you're jumping from one thing to another thing to another thing, and it's all the same wire, it's the same ground, um, that stops that resistance from accumulating from this point to this point to this point to this point to this point. To this point. And that's what I'm trying to achieve when I do, like split the wire like this, is to stop that resistance from happening. All right, so I want to put that there, but it's not wanting to stay there. So I'm gonna have to put some weight on it somehow to get it to stay there. All right, so go ahead and solder this in place. Check the ground. And add just a little bit to the ground area on the cat on the pot itself. Right there. There we go. That's better. That's what I like to see. solder on this. I don't need to have that much solder on here, so I'm going to get rid of some of it. There, it's better. Push this back. We're grounded there, we're grounded there. Now to these guys over here. Oh, what a shitty job. And again, connecting the two up. My razor blade. I'm gonna go right about here. Split it. Oh, gotta cut a little bit more. Didn't really cut that deep. just to set it right like that and tack it. Just like that. Now this is the last one in the chain. So all I really have to do is clip. <coughs> Slide this over a little bit. There, Take my gun. All 
right, so that's done. So all the grounds are connected, really nice and clean. Time to make these connections here. this I'm going to use my white wire. Here is a piece here, but I want a solid piece. So one is going to go in the center terminal here for the tone. around like this because this is going to be a one solid piece as well solder heat up, push the wire back, All right, and then this goes to the volume, pretty simple. The center post goes out to the output. That's the way they had this. Yep. Now, oh God, what a mess, I tell you. The rest of it is wiring up the pickups and that I can't do until I get the body complete. So I got one pickup here, the uh, neck, the bridge, and then I have the other parts of the pickup going over here for the, uh, the hots for the pickups are going over here and then it goes back around over here and comes out over here. So that's that. find some place to put all this shit because I am running out of room. I mean, I knocked down a lot of the stuff that I had sitting over there as far as a pile for parts for different guitars and stuff. It's pretty much knocked down because I've been getting a lot of these guitars done. I got the seven string is complete. All I have to do is do a setup on it and put the truss rod cover back on it. Um, 
and then get that up on eBay, but all in all, let's see here, That's those are not what I want, this is what I want, again I saved the little pieces because little pieces may come in handy. This wire is kind of expensive too, it's not cheap, so you want to make sure you, know, you utilize as much as possible instead of wasting it. All right, so this is complete now. All this stuff here is going to go back to the owner. And this is all going to get loosened up and polish this up over here. I'll be next. All right, so just as I suspected, somebody used a Sharpie marker to kind of hide the silver from the black. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe this off with some of the dust that's on it and I could tell somebody added these in because you can kind of see the rectangle is not really a rectangle it's not really square the holes have been countersunk but you can kind of tell the way that they countersunk it and uh, didn't clean up the edges a little bit so yeah somebody added those in now I've used plastic polishes uh, in the past and none of them actually do what they say that they're going to do as far as like removing certain scratches and, and you know material and stuff that's embedded in the plastic itself get rid of that clean it and make it look like you know plexiglass or whatever all over again uh, even with the Harley Davidson stuff with uh, you know some people will call them windshield some people will call them a shield uh, yeah, they, the plastic polishes don't work very well. Even the stuff that Harley-Davidson recommends really doesn't do a good job. So what we found is I was kind of messing around a little bit. Using a little bit of uh, rubbing compound actually worked a lot better. The only problem with it is some windshields have a UV coating on them, and you don't want to remove that UV coating. So that's probably what makes it safer to use the what's recommended on those. So... I would try to talk with, like if you're a biker and stuff, I would try to talk to your Harley-Davidson dealer about what to use. Because again, some windshields have a UV coating on them and you don't want to remove that. So this, I don't have to worry about that. And I'm going to use rubbing compound. So I shake up my bottle of rubbing compound. I am using a wool pad on this, not a, which I need to clean the wool pad. Nothing a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver can't handle. So I got a little bit of rubbing compound on here. And I'm going to be doing like half of this at a time because I got to hold it so it doesn't go flying across the room. Yeah, let's see how this thing turned out. At least doing half of it can kind of compare to two sides.
Oh yeah, I like that better. Much better. Here's the side over here I didn't do. Let's see if I can get this thing with the lights. So here are the lights, the LEDs. You can see that they're a lot crisper. And then over here you can see that the LEDs have a little bit of a haze around them. A lot crisper, hazed. So let's go ahead and do the other side. Hard thing about plastic or anything that you polish is not touching it after you polish it. Alright, I am using microfiber. And a lot of people have said, oh, microfiber scratches the shit out of stuff. And I gotta tell you, I'm fucking rubbing down on plastic right now, and I am not scratching the shit out of it. Alright, so now you can see LEDs look crisp. LEDs look crisp. Alright, so next thing to do is to put this all together. Make it a complete again. Then wipe it down again, because I got my fingerprints all over it and uh, put it off to the side so when the guitar body gets done I can put that on there 